Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the show today, Kashi Koja, founder of Greenbridge Corporate Council, and Roberta Lebrun, a software engineer at 42, what's the name of that thing? 42 For, Lines. 42 Lines. Uh, any, any relationship to the 42 uh, 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 science fiction uh, thing? I think it is a reference to Douglas Adams' uh, yeah. uh, work, the, the answer to the life the universe and everything. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure that we understand where you're coming from. I, th I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, we recently had, uh, I guess, the second or third, uh, second, I guess, a government shutdown, uh, which lasted only an hour or two, uh, and resulted in a bipartisan budget deal. The Democrats gave, the, uh, gave their approval for big spending plans on the Republicans' part for defense, the Republicans gave their approval to Democrats' big social welfare spending plans on health care and other, and other issues, and you and I and our children will pay for the whole kit and oh, caboodle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about how much it's going to cost us. Oh, it's going to cost us, you know, well, it's, it's not just the budget that it costs us, but you, you, if, if, when you take into account all the inflationary measures that they take, you know, we, we're going to be paying this forever and ever and ever. There is no end in sight. I cannot understand how how can you as a Republican actually vote for a budget that is so completely overblown where the military is, I don't know, 20 odd percent and, the, and it was increased by what, 500? Um, well, I think the point on the military is we have a, a military that's bigger than the next nine, uh, mili uh, nine countries' military budgets combined. Right, we, we're, we have uh, a military base. That's, in, that's, in, bigger, that's bigger than, I'm talking about Russia, China, uh, South Korea, France, Britain, Italy, combined, uh, all of them combined, yeah. and several of those are, are, are ostensibly, at least, are our allies. So why do we need to spend more than the next nine combined when we've got some pretty good-sized moats on either side of the country called the Atlantic Ocean and the <laughs> Pacific Ocean? And, and we have and we have a, a military bases in over a hundred countries. This makes no sense that we, we should not be the policemen of the world. Um, uh, it just, it just makes no sense. Yeah, I'm particularly uh, uh, incensed by the fact that North Korea is making nice with South Korea at the Olympics. Right. They're showing a united front at the Olympic Games. Getting along just Well, a fine. lot of it is propaganda, but yes. Well, fine. But they are obviously trying to find a peaceful solution to the peninsula's problems. Meanwhile, Pence and Trump are waving a red bloody flag trying to instigate war with North Korea. Because it plays well for their constituents, and that's ultimately what it's about. Uh, yeah, well, it, it's, if their constituents is Lockheed Martin and Rockwell well, yeah, and <laughs> Boeing and the rest of the defense contractors, that's true. I that's suppose true. that's true. That's right. But I don't think there's anybody in the United States among the citizenry that is particularly interested in doing, uh, doing uh, what was that sitcom uh, about the Korean War? Uh, all MASH. Over MASH. MASH. Doing MASH all over again. Right, right. I don't um, seem interested in doing the uh, the military parade either and spending that money. Oh yeah. my God! Oh, don't get me <laughs> the, sorry on that. The 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 you know I'm I'm a person that absolutely hates jingoism and and most patriotism, and uh, in, in in that sense, uh, you're you're when you love a country more than you love the what the country actually stands. When you're more concerned about the symbols of the country, like the flag, than what the actual meaning of the flag is. Um, I think I'm not sure the flag means anything. Well, it, I mean, it's, it supposed, it's, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be a symbol of something. Yeah. But when you're more concerned about, you know, being able to burn the flag uh, or not being able to burn the flag uh, versus... Being more the, concerned about the symbol than the idea. Exactly. Exactly. And that's and I think that's ultimately the problem. And that's the hallmark of authoritarianism. Yeah, exactly. And so, and so when I hear, you know, growing up in a country that was mostly socialist, uh, Mexico, and where we had military parades every 15th of every, every Independence Day, we had a, a military parade, um, and and you see that it's all about this jingoistic thing of of you know gung ho's military power, and uh, it's scary. It's really scary. Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday about about a, a biography of uh, Hitler, and uh, and we we're trying to see all of the parallels, and, 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 and I hate to compare things with Hitler, there's a, 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 a statement in the internet that you shouldn't, you know, once you, once you compare something to Hitler, you've, they lost. Cover, you've lost the conversation, right? Um, I forget what the, what the name is. I'm uh, trying to remember that myself, okay. I can't. Um, but anyway, uh, but in this particular case, 
uh, it is comparing apples to apples. You're comparing politicians to politicians. And the amount of, of, of uh, stuff, words, the, the, the wording, the expressions, it's so similar, it's scary. Well, let's keep, let's keep in mind that uh, Hitler was the chancellor of Germany, uh, which was uh, also uh, under the leadership prior to that, uh, quite, a while, quite a while prior to that, of Bismarck. Yes. who is the guy that brought uh, all of the social welfare po programs that we modeled our, our public schools after, we right. modeled our uh, social security after, we modeled all of our social welfare programs. Those are basically German Bismarck uh, in, in origin, at least as far as their uh, uh, inspiration is concerned. And two-thirds, we talk about the, federal, yeah. the military budget being overblown, and it right. is, but two-thirds of the federal budget is the non-discretionary budget, namely social security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, various welfare programs, and the and the interest on the federal debt. Mostly, the lion's share of that is Social Security and Medicare. Well, which, and which nobody is willing to even talk about the fact that Social Security is uh, technically broke. Medicare is even in worse shape. If they were public companies, they would be uh, taken uh, taken you know they, shot, would be, yeah. they would be bankrupt, bank bankrupted, yeah, and, and told by the by the regulators the regulators they could not uh, could no longer uh, do business. Meanwhile, we're we're, you know, we're ignoring the elephant in the room, which is uh, an unsustainable, totally unsustainable, uh, social welfare program. Right. And the right. Democrats are just wanting to expand well, to it. Bernie know, Sanders is saying, Medicare for all. He's saying, take a broke program, a, a program that is right, totally make, underwater, make and, ma and make it apply to everybody. Right. Right. And and when you, when you when you're thinking about fifteen percent of my salary goes to Social Security. And a good other portion that goes to Medicare and to the medical programs. Uh, if I was given 15% of my salary to invest on my own, you know how easily and nicely I could retire in 20 years. It's 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 just crazy. And and the fact is, yeah, it's broken. No, and but you couldn't be dependent upon to save your money. I'm, I'm sure you you got to have nanny government. Right. Before. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is which is I mean it's it's just it's just sad. In the meantime, we have something called. Uh, H.R. 4760, it didn't actually get passed, it didn't, hasn't seen right. the light of day, at least not yet. But it's one of these things, sort of like the, the Patriot Bill, which uh, was uh, appeared magically already written uh, whenever there was an emergency in order to justify it. H.R. Uh, 4760 is pending in the House of Representatives. It would give, as a, you know, a bipartisan gesture to the Democrats, it would give Dreamers a three-year extension before they would face deportation once again. Mm -hmm. So they get a three-year holiday or, or, or uh, recess. In exchange, it would manda mandate E-Verify. Now, what, what is E-Verify? E-Verify is uh, an electronic system that would reduce, uh, supposedly reduce illegal, immigra uh, would reduce illegal immigration, but it would, what, it would con what, it would what, it, what it is made up of is a biometric identifier, like a, a thumbprint uh -huh. or a fingerprint or an iris scan, something that would be required for anybody to work for anybody in the, in, in the, in the United States. If you wanted to go to work in the U.S., you would have to be e-verified with biometric scanning. In other words, everybody would be scanned uh, biometrically. This was, this was written by Congressman uh, George Orwell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could just as well have been. I think just well, I mean, no, what my point is, that, that bill... Uh, and it's a bipartisan bill, uh -huh. well, it's a Republican yeah. bill, let's be, let's be fair. It's a Republican bill that's waiting in the wings, waiting for some sort of, uh, what, they were, what they were actually waiting for, they thought that the budget showdown of a week or so ago was going to actually turn into another uh, budget showdown where there would, you know, the government would shut down and all that, and then they'd throw this thing out there and get it passed. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, the bipartisan, you know, spend all the money that we uh, don't have mm -hmm. passed instead. But that's what's, that's what's sitting there, waiting in the wings. It would also reduce, re actually reduce legal immigration. Uh, we're not talking about illegal mm -hmm. immigration. It would put a cap on re uh, legal immigration as well. Uh, it would have a racist a impact in, uh, of course. aspect in the sense that it would say merit-based as, right. uh, as opposed to uh, the way it is now, which has there's a lottery, a lottery. Uh, you know, people from anywhere right. can, can actually get in. And, uh, it, and it would end so-called chain migration, which again is bringing in your family. You can't bring your family in anymore. That's what that's what chain migration is all about, and it would authorize the wall, mm -hmm. and and the wall is sort of like the Maginot Line for the twenty first right. century. Right, It's uh, not going to stop anything. It's all it's going to do is waste money. Well, uh, my my perspective, uh, there's a very libertarian one, 
which is, uh, it, it's all very simple. Every single person in this country comes from immigrants. Every single person. Including the Native Americans. Yes, if you, <clears throat> if you, if you go back 30,000 years where they crossed the Bering Straits, every single person in this country, we did, we, our species did not evolve in this continent. So, so yes, everybody here is an immigrant. Um, and what has made America great throughout the years has been immigrants both at the, at the intellectual level, people who came here you know, and, and, and brought their technologies and, and their ideas, um, but, but also people who came here to work. So my, my idea, and, and, and I think it's, it's a mostly principled libertarian one, is um, the border is, is, a, is an imaginary line. Anybody who wants to come in through the front door should be allowed to come in through the front door. Everybody who's you know, willing to come in, not commit a crime, uh, and be a productive member of society should be allowed to come in. Uh, of course, at the same time, you have to close uh, loopholes where people co are coming in to get any social uh, kind of, they're looking here for, for a handout. But the, the, the reality is that the majority of people, that if you interview the majority of people that come to this country, they come to this country because they want a better life, they want to work, they want the opportunities that this country provides. And, and in, some, in, some, in some cases, they, want, they also want the, the, the freedom that we at least say we have. Um, but uh, uh, at the same time as you have to, to, to open the front door, you know, close the, close the back door. You know, anybody else who's, 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 who's trying, to, if you have an open door, if you're trying to, to break, to come through the uh, back door, you know, break, break the gates or, or, or cross over the desert, you're probably doing it for a reason, right? You're not, you don't, you don't want to come here to do something legal. So at that point, at that point, yes, sure, throw all the money you want at the border, which would be a slight, slight, slight problem. Things that make me really incensed is when I hear of uh, federal enforcement agents in the desert uh, 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 where they where they get where they um, uh, go and see uh, caches of water Sorry. that that volunteers have put there, and they dump them and throw them away, basically killing people who are crossing the desert in the middle of the summer uh, only to, fight, to, to look for a better life. And it's not like, it's, it's not like any American uh, is willing to do the jobs that people are coming here to do. Well, the, the point is, I mean, we, had, we talked earlier about the fact that uh, Social Security is going broke. Right. Part of that is that it's, it's a, a demographic problem, which right. is right. that uh, right. people Although, are getting older uh, living to a, a you know a ripe old age, it was put to, put together when the you know the expected uh, age of you know the lifespan was something like sixty, and now right. it's something like eighty. Right. Uh, and so you you've got a funding problem yeah. because of demographics. Baby boom is all retiring now. Although one of the things we have to remember is that if you you know most folks who are undocumented and, and working in this country are not actually taking advantage of all those benefits. Uh, they can because they can't. Yeah. Um, right. And so you know when we talk about. Um, you know, drain on, on social welfare. It's not necessarily <clears throat> those folks who are coming in and who are un undocumented and working because you know they're they're not getting paid minimum wage. They're they're doing all the jobs that um, we don't have Americans that want to do them. Um, so I, I think that's something to, important to note. And, and the other thing that uh, I just read recently is that uh, entrepreneurs in uh, tech entrepreneurs in China and in India who you know prior to this administration were flooding into the U.S. and helping us build fantastic companies in Silicon Valley are now deciding to stay in mm -hmm. India or, or, or China or, or to go back and say this country is not friendly to us, this country is not friendly to innovation and not friendly to Im immigrants and they're deciding to, to either stay home uh, or go back uh, well, and they're causing a brain drain. To a, to a, to a certain extent that was, that was part of their plan and, and, a, and a smart plan all along of those countries. Let's, edu let's, let's create an, education, an, ed an educated class uh, uh, hopefully they'll go to America. They'll 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 get ideas, entrepreneurial ideas, and then come back and and, and, and increase um, uh, the local economy as well. Which I'm all in favor for because because ultimately you know we're one single species, and and the more if you liberal liberalize trade, um, everybody is, is stands to benefit. So I have no problem you know with. With, with yeah, we we yeah, have open right. borders for capital, right? Uh, why not open borders for well, people, yeah. right? Exactly. So. Human capital, exactly. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, and you mentioned the the, the fact that uh, most immigrants are not uh, uh, tapping the social welfare uh, right. system all that much. Right. Most of them I, are, I, actually, heard, are actually are actually paying in. They might do it at the local level, uh, going to schools and emergency rooms. But as far as at the federal level, they're actually a, a net benefit right. to the system. Yeah, they're, I've, they're I've heard, of, but I've heard economists go both aside ways. Aside from that. 
the fact that they're coming to take our jobs, aside from the fact we probably don't want those jobs, but even, even beyond that, everybody that comes here and works is also a consumer. That's if right. you're working, right. you're consuming, right. creating jobs tax. for other people. Right. If, you're, if, you're, if you can move here from Mexico and uh, spend your money on whatever, whatever it is, you know, uh -huh. on, the, uh, on the, uh, the car that I build in Detroit, right. I'm getting a job because of your production. Right. And you know, right. it's, it's, a, it's a virtuous circle. There yeah, is no, that's, that's how economies grow. Exactly. Countries that have rising populations, for the most part, are growing companies. Countries that have declining populations are countries that are economically in decline. And that's one of the main reasons why that phenomena exists. Uh, those of us who understand the, the true value of money, and I, and I, and I, I know it, it sounded uh, like I'm, I'm putting myself apart, but I think there's, there's a certain amount of people who understand that, that money isn't a, a zero-sum game in, in, we, in which uh, there's only a certain amount of money that needs to get passed from one person to another. Money can be destroyed. I can, ta I can take the production, uh, the produ you know, what you produce, and throw it away. At the same time, I can make something, I can make a chair, and that creates, that creates something that eventually creates money into the economy. Um, uh, I've seen economies go both ways, whether saying whether, whether, whether uh, um, immigrants are a net positive to the economy and a net negative. I tend to believe, from my, my understanding, that, that they are mostly a net positive to the American economy because they're, 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 they're creating things, they're creating services, they're creating, uh, uh, they're producing. And they're, and more they're creating money. They're more entrepreneurial than, than most Native born Americans. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's kind of a, you know, a, uh, uh, a uh, denigration of the other that we're seeing. I mean, the political class, both Democrats Absolutely. and Republicans, the nativists, the, uh, you know, the America firsters, right. will try to create uh, an enemy, meaning the, the alien, the foreigner, the, right. the undocumented, the, uh, the immigrant. Uh, they're saying that these people are coming to take your jobs, they're, a, you know, they're, uh, you listen to Trump talk, they're, 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 you know, they're rapists and child molesters and every other bad thing that you can possibly think of. I mean, he's spewing that nonsense in the State of the Union address, for God's sake, but, you know, which is all, you know, which is statistically just totally backwards. Uh, they're much more law-abiding than most of us are, uh, on average. Yeah, because they can't afford to be but in I mean, trouble it's with gone, the law. It's gone right. to an even greater level. FBI Director, for, Director Christopher Wray testifying before Congress about China is now saying that the whole of society is threatened by China. All of China, everybody in China is a threat to the United States. They're coming to, they're coming to the United States, they're starting Confucius centers, which are, I guess, spy nests or something. I mean, China, come on. The, the rhetoric, it's, it's just rhetoric, it's, it's, it's uh... But it supports the military industrial Espionage, of intelligence complex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It makes us. It makes us think that we have enemies all over the the world, which is, you know, the majority of, of countries hate us, but in a very well, mainly because we've been bombing and droning. Yeah, them. exactly. But but not in a very active way either. They they have their own problems to worry about. It, it's really uh, it, it, as somebody who comes from an immigrant background. So when he, my my parents uh, emigrated from uh, the Indian subcontinent. Um, my uh, father was a uh, worked in a bank, had an engineering degree. The only job he could get was as a dishwasher and a, a busboy, and so that's what he did uh, for many years, and, and worked his way up, uh, and was able to send his kids th through college. Um, and so, you know, what we're seeing when we hear this rhetoric, it, it's um, you know this making of the other. Um, I'll tell you. Um, it, it sets up situations where if you're, you're talking about China, for example, it wasn't that long ago, it was less than 100 years ago when uh, we had uh, massacres of, uh, of, of Chinese folks in California, mm -hmm. uh, whole towns uh, decimated. And these were folks who built the railroads. These are folks who built the infrastructure of California and they were wiped <clears throat> out because of this kind of rhetoric. Little known fact, the original drug laws, anti-drug laws in the United States were anti-Chinese yes. laws. Yes, opium. They were the opium laws. Uh -huh. And they started in California and they made uh, not the opium that went into patent medicine. That was fine because every uh, you know, white folks use patent medicine, but the opium smoked in opium dens, that right. was made illegal right. because that targeted the Chinese. 
the original drug laws were anti-Chinese laws. Yeah, and the heroin, the, the heroin and, and marijuana laws as well, for, as well. For, for black people and, and uh, Mexican people. Yeah, I mean, John Ehrlichman was quoted as saying, uh, we'll, we'll get the uh, blacks by making marijuana illegal and mm -hmm. we'll get uh, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the liberals by, uh, you know, in another way. Yeah. Uh, and, so, you know, keep them both on the news every, mm -hmm. every you know, the six o'clock news every night. Yeah, when, when you make everything illegal, everybody's a criminal. And when everybody's a criminal, this is Orwell's, Orwell's uh, uh, saying, actually. And when everybody's a criminal, then you have con complete power. Well, that's, that's exactly what's going on. Uh, or, or attempting to be going on, but of course we are resisting. We have to resist. The real have to try. resistance. Um, the, uh, uh, the CPI surged oh. a half a percent in January. That's what, 6% at a, at a, uh, uh, a, uh, on an annual rate. Uh, we've had nine years now quantitative easing and near zero interest rates and no inflation and it's been a conundrum well we, I think we know what's going on well the inflation has been in assets stocks and bonds have been going up like gangbusters but consumer price levels have not been going up at least as measured by the federal government is that starting to change well part of the problem I, you, I think you just you, you nailed it on the head is the fact that that inflation is being measured by by a completely imaginary measure that doesn't take into account what food and, and, and housing, right? Or, or, or certain parts of the economy that are absolutely obvious that, oh my God, you know, uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, food and energy are, food, are, yeah, are if, part of the CPI. If right? you don't take, if you don't take food and energy as part mm -hmm. of the CPI, I mean, that's, that's a good chunk of the economy right there. Um, again, those of us who understand the value of money understand that, that there's only, at a, at a certain time in the economy, there's a certain amount of product and things that actually represent that that money actually represents. If you add more bills to the economy, well, the 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 price of those goods goes up because there's just more bills representing that money. So when we went down, when we went off the gold standard again back in the Nixon days and 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 and, and in at other parts of our history, um, uh, we created inflation at that point, and so. Any money that and any numbers that come out of the out of the Fed about inflation or, or, or not, I mean, it's just not not targeting the real the real part of the problem, which is uh, uh, the fact that inflation is 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 created by government printing money. Uh, but are we starting to see consumer price inflation now? Are, 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 is it time to buy tips? It's <laughs> it's 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 random it's random numbers given you know. I think it's random numbers. It's, 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 it's not, I don't, I don't find it indicative of, of where the economy is going overall. Well, we talked a little bit about the, the immigration issues uh, earlier. Uh, now it's starting to really hit home in Florida and in California, where uh, in the 100-mile border zone where the, the uh, Fourth Amendment doesn't apply, mm -hmm. ICE is uh, raiding uh, in Florida and California. Can you comment on that? Uh, sure. I, you know, I, I um, was on the board for many years of, uh, of the Asian Law Caucus, which does a lot of uh, um, uh, legal services for immigrant communities and, and um, has been on the scene when uh, ICE has done some of these raids and rounded up um, folks. And basically, you know, these folks are put into detention uh, and they don't have the same rights as anybody who uh, is a citizen who's rounded up in, in a criminal uh, case and, and put into jail. Um, you know, these are folks who don't get um, health care, don't get water, don't get uh, the, the, the basics. And so these are real human rights violations that are happening uh, under the guise of immigration enforcement. And so, um, you know, it's, um, uh, again, as, as somebody who comes from an immigrant background, uh, it's terrifying um, to, to see that happening uh, in, in modern day America and to see folks treated that way. Um, and so, it, you know, to, to me, I, I recall um, uh, as a child being, um, you know, even though I was born here, being very afraid of, uh, of immigration uh, officials and, and having that be a preoccupation of my, my parents as well. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I can only imagine what uh, children who are, uh, are, are uh, whose parents are immigrants uh, and maybe undocumented uh, immigrants, how they must be feeling uh, about what's, what they're seeing and what's going on. So, um, you know, uh, it's unfortunate uh, that we have an administration that is denigrating uh, humans from, from other countries and that is de denigrating immigrants 
Um, and um, you know, there, there doesn't seem to be much, you know, much of an end in sight right now. The lack, the lack of humanity. Uh, it's nearly every day that I see uh, somebody posting in Facebook, uh, vid you know, videos of of families being torn apart by uh, by ICE um, uh, agents who come in and, and, and yeah, I, in regard I'm, to the Dreamers, the, uh, I'm, I'm the, uh, the response of the uh, administration press secretary to uh, parents being deported. Uh, with their American-born children having to stay here, mm -hmm. well, we're not, we're not, we don't get involved in make, in family decisions. Uh, it's, it's, it's. Oh, it makes me, makes me cringe. It makes me cry. It makes me want to really, you know, how, how could, how could we do this to another set of human beings? I mean, w the, the things that humans do to other humans. Speaking of what th humans do to other humans, deranged, uh, mentally deficient gunmen of all ages. Uh, shoot up schools, shooting galleries, I call them, mm -hmm. because uh, in schools, they're gun-free zones. Nobody has the, has the ability to or the capability of, 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 of defending themselves because you, you can't. It's illegal. But it's not illegal for, well, it's illegal, but they don't, the, but the criminal doesn't care. Right. Uh, and they go to a gun-free a gun -free zone and, and start shooting people at will. It happened again in Florida uh, this week. Uh, is there going to ever come a time when the gun control advocates quit turning schools and other public places into shooting galleries? Uh, I think actually we're going we're gonna to see some kind of gun control measures and they're going to fail terribly. Uh, not because, you know, they're, they're misguided, because, because if we were to, you know, if we were talking about this 50 years ago when all these guns weren't in the public, uh, <coughs> that'd be one thing. But the reality is the guns are out there. Whether we want to or not, we need to deal with that. And I think, yeah, uh, having... Uh, people armed in schools and I have this argument all the time with with, with uh, all, I have a lot of liberal liberal friends who believe strongly that that we need more gun control um, uh, I am not I am not in disfavor of of making sure that that loopholes that allow people who are have mental problems uh, who have criminal backgrounds uh, are prevented from having guns but the reality is that guns are mostly already out there we need to do, we need to figure out more creative ways to to deal with the situation uh, and and especially deal also with the mental aspects health aspects of the situation why why is it that every time we see one of these we hear afterwards that this particular individual was spouting things on uh, social media uh, was allowed access to buy you know weapons despite was, the law that yeah, and said was, and that was also and was also uh, under uh, Medication. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place on the Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you.